Hi, you're listening to the Taking Ground podcast, connecting you to the many excellent churches, ministries and people within our wider family. You can keep up to date with the latest from Taking Ground at takingground.org.uk and never miss an episode of this podcast by hitting subscribe. But for now, here's your host, Rachel Broughton. As a charismatic family of churches, the gifts of the Spirit are really crucial and fundamental to the way that our churches operate, from how Sunday morning looks, right the way through to how our leadership operates, how our community groups or our midweek groups function. We want to see the gifts of the Spirit in each of those settings, really. Um, but they can be quite tricky to understand and unpack. So I thought it would be a good idea to begin to have a little look at each of them. And we're going to start by thinking about the prophetic. Now, you might have heard that term thrown around in church a little bit. Somebody brings a prophetic word at the front, maybe on a Sunday, or somebody comes to you and gives you a prophetic encouragement. Um, But what does it mean? What does it look like? How does it operate? I'm going to read to you by way of introduction, a passage from 1 Corinthians 12, just to give you an idea of where that comes from. So 1 Corinthians 12, we'll go from verse 7. It says, A spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still, another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. Such a list of different gifts, isn't it? And I thought to help us unpack that a little bit, particularly the gift of the prophetic, I wanted to invite Tony Gray onto the podcast today. So welcome, Tony. Thank you, Rachel. It's good to be here. It's really good to have you. It's good to see you as well. Tony and I have, um, yeah really worked together quite a lot over the past few years, haven't we? Yes, we we have. We have. (laughs) Yeah, so it's great to have you on today. Um, Before we dive into the prophetic, what the prophetic is, I want to get a feel of you and Mm -hmm. how you came to understand what the prophetic is. So could you just, by way of introduction really, give me a little bit of your story. How did you come to faith firstly and then how to learning how to prophesy learning what that is and what that looks like how it serves the church Mm. it's quite a long story Rachel as you (laughs) imagine and know I became a Christian in my teens and in a Baptist church an evangelical church down in Hampshire Uh, but initially my journey of faith was really quite quite hard going because Although I had come into a knowledge of God as my Father and the whole, and Jesus as my Saviour, I heard and knew and understood very little about the Holy Spirit. And it really wasn't until my student years and just after those that having got to a point where with a, a number of good friends during our student years, we were really feeling dissatisfied with the standard evangelical approach to things and felt there was something more. Mm. And it was only uh, sometime after I'd left university, started my teaching career, that uh, I began to hear about the the Holy Spirit as Mm. a person, as someone to relate to. And I realized the gap for me, I knew the Father, I knew the Son, I only knew about the Holy Spirit, right? To some yeah, extent. I see that. I see that difference. I know mm. the Father, I know the Son, but I only know about the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah, wow. I think that's probably an experience reflected mm. by many, many other people. Yeah. And I stepped in to a, a faith journey of getting to know the Holy Spirit. Began with baptism and the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, and beginning to recognise there was a whole world of spiritual yeah. discernment and activity that had been so what was that like what was that like stepping into it it was exciting 
it was challenging. Yeah. I was leading, uh, Dorian and I were leading the young people in the church at the time. Wow. And we all kind of started on this journey. Sometimes they were ahead of us. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes we were just ahead of them in, in our experience mm -hmm. and in our understanding. They're very special days. And some of those young people are still our friends, yeah. even now. I've heard people talk about it like seeing in black and white. And then when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, being able to see in color. In, in technicolor. Yeah, it, it, it was a little bit time. like that. Yeah. And suddenly, it's, it's like coming out of a, 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 a darkness into seeing something, a whole new vista mm. spread out. I've sometimes likened it to when I've have you been flying. Do you fly in an mm. airplane? You know, sometimes you start underneath the clouds and then you come through and suddenly there's this whole new yeah. world up yeah. there. Yeah, above, uh, the, above clouds. the clouds. Yeah. And it was a little bit, I've used that illustration sometimes. And that began a journey of to, trying to understand what these gifts of the Spirit, once got to know the Spirit mm -hmm. and the power of the Spirit, yeah. what were these gifts that Paul talks about in mm. that passage in Corinthians and elsewhere. And that was a journey step by step of <clears throat> beginning to experience tongues, interpretation, mm. discernment, seeing people delivered from the powers of, of evil spirits and, and so on. But it was a journey. Yeah. It, it took it took time. I was gonna ask what was the first time that you really felt, oh I've got a prophetic word for somebody, but in a journey type thing that you're talking about there maybe it's more progressive than that maybe it's not oh i i heard from god and there was a word but maybe there was what, yeah, no what no i say? think it is a more of a progressive thing uh, i it was a long time before i actually had that kind of sense of a specific word for a specific person sure. that that wasn't where i began my clear call was to be a, a teacher Mm. Of the, I was a teacher by trade, as it were, <laughs> but also I felt that was, and, and, and others recognized that in me, that my calling was, was teaching the scriptures. Yeah. And it was only as I did that, and people would come back to me and say, what you shared this morning, it, it not only taught me... In your mind. In my, yeah. in my head, but it, it, it did something in my heart. It moved me, yeah. yeah. Mm. So it, the difference between being an informer... Yeah. And being an equipper. Wow, yeah. And I felt that was somehow what, what this prophetic thing was was about. It wasn't just uh, now as a teacher. Giving people head knowledge. Giving people head knowledge, yeah. which is important. Absolutely. But giving them a sense of, yeah, I, I've got that. That's in me. And that has led me into a deeper appreciation of the work of God yeah. in, in my life. So people we used to say... You are a teacher, but you've got this prophetic edge. That's mm -hmm. uh, an interesting phrase. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> what does Tony? that mean? We still use it today, and I'm still. <laughs> so nobody sure really knows what it means. <laughs> it's actually, um, it, I think it's an area we need to. In fact, we we, we with a group of prophetic people here in Tees Valley a while back, and uh, when Dave and Chris Richards were here. And uh, I sense then we need to explore what we actually mean by that, phrase. By that word, yeah. prophetic and prophetic edge. edge. Yeah. So for me, the prophetic gift was more uh, of a sort of um, <laughs> entanglement with my teaching. Mm. The two were very hard to, to distinguish. Later, I began to occasionally get that sense of that's something God wants to say to this individual person mm. but that's never been the primary part of what it means to me to be prophetic for me it has been the teaching with that something else that yeah. moved from inform to equip yeah. uh, that came to a head really with my time as pres uh, principal of the king's bible college yes that was up and in scotland up right? in scotland yeah. between 1992 and 2000 yeah and during that time that blend became yeah significant for me more and more and then when the bible college moved uh down to oxford we stayed in the northeast we felt that was the lord's heart for us uh and uh, we became part of what was then emmanuel yeah. now tees valley, no, tees valley church here yeah. and during that period of time there was another step okay for me 
I had a bit of a heart problem. I'd had a little procedure on that. I, I was resting. I was sitting in, in, in my garden. Mm. I had one of those moments when I knew the Holy Spirit was talking to me. You, you know, sometimes you, you think, was that the Holy Spirit? Was that me? Yeah, was, yeah. This time I knew. So it, clear. It was completely out of the blue. And he yeah. said, I want you to take up the prophet's staff. Wow. And I don't mean... Like, you can't see it, folks, but here it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean a metaphorical one. Wow. Now, I'm not an extrovert. You know me well no, enough to know no. that I'm not an no. extrovert. So this was, <laughs> where do I go from here? And I knew that I'd do three things with this stuff. I had to go up on Carlton Bank and pray over the Tees Valley, holding out my staff. I had to hold out the staff and pray over the church on Sunday morning. And I had to pray over in Stockton. I had to pray over the town, somewhere down in the town. When I, that blew me apart. Oh, right? I just want to retreat and hide. <laughs> so this was a shift really from yeah. being prophetic to God saying, I'm, I'm causing you to be a prophet Right, okay. So, so there's a began, shift there from yeah. having a prophetic gift of some sort to, to some degree. See, being really seeing that now. I, I still teaching, I still yeah. love teaching, but now it was like something else had moved into yeah. the centre of the frame. I yeah. actually did all three of those things. Wow. I well went out to Carlton Bank on a foggy day. <laughs> that, that, you know, that's a good way to be obedient <laughs> to God, isn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> Wait in my moment, prayed over the valley, did on here. And then at one point, uh, they did a little video uh, about uh, the church and, and the valley and prayed over the river down wow. okay. by, by uh, the yeah. Millennium Bridge. And that. So those were my commissions at that time. Fantastic. Oh, fantastic. So it's amazing to hear your journey with it, really. Mm. And, and from, you know, not knowing God, coming to faith, being filled with the Spirit and learning what it is to operate in the Spirit, yeah. operate with the power of the Spirit. Yeah encouraging the church and then being able to be in a position where you can pray over yeah. the, the church, the city, the yes. people. Amazing. Um, so that's your personal story. And what does that look like for the church today? Times, things have changed. Think the church, um, the church looks how it looks now. And, and what's the role, I would ask, of the prophetic in a season like now? Um, for yeah, people going to church on Sunday, <clears throat> going to community groups or midweek groups yeah. in their church, mm. what? How do we take hold of what the prophetic is and, and begin to operate <clears throat> in that? I think <clears throat> to answer your question broadly first, I think we're entering a critical phase of the Western Church, in particular the Western Church's uh, journey in God. But I think the charismatic phase has plateaued. And I think we're entering a new season, a new phase. So what do you mean by the charismatic phase? Well, and what do you mean by plateau? Right. During the 90, late, in the 1960s and 70s, the focus was on baptism in the Spirit, speaking in tongues, the gifts of the Spirit, ch changes in the church, radical changes in the church, way the church operates as the body of Christ, yeah. as God's people, body ministry, and, and all of these kind of things were talked about. Very, very, very exciting days. Yeah. That led on to church planting and, and so on. But as we move towards the end of the 20th century and into the new century, it was like that sense of the immediacy of the Holy Spirit began to wane a little bit. Okay. Um, it's a longer story than I can, sure, uh, than yeah. I can tell now. But I think now what is happening is we're, we're rediscovering that sense of the immediacy of the Holy Spirit. But it's a little bit different than it was before okay. because it's almost like he's saying, uh, yes, you've got all of that and you want to polish that up, yeah. all of those things, the gifts of the Spirit. But there's a new step. It's, it's a prophetic era, wow. I believe. It's a prophetic season and era into which the church, is, as we know, especially in the Western world, because some parts of the world are ahead of us in that. Mm, yeah. Um, now, I don't yeah. fully understand what all of that means just yet. Yeah. But I think to go to the other part of your, your yeah. question, in terms of, let's say, 
just about everybody, because Paul says just about everybody can prophesy. Mm. Prophesy on the level of the prophetic gift, which is to bring encouragement and strengthening uh, to God's people. And everybody can operate. Now, what can you do with 400 people? You can't do that. But the best place for practicing and growing in the prophetic gift is in your small group. Yeah. Or in your small church, in yeah. some cases. Yeah. Where you can begin to, to do it. Where everybody can bring something. And everybody can at one level or other. And it doesn't have to be, I've got a word for so-and-so. Mm. It can be just a sense of, this is what the Holy Spirit wants to say. It could be a reading. Mm, passage, it could be a song. Yeah. Mm. It could be a dance. It could be a picture that you've drawn. Yeah. It could be just sharing something that you've seen out there. On, uh, 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 and, it, and yet it, it said something to you. So, Tony, what's the difference between having a word of knowledge for somebody and getting a sense of what God is saying what, a, word, yeah. a prophetic word. What, mm. the, what would you say mm. the difference is? I, I think this difference is quite nuanced, to be honest <laughs> with yeah. you. In essence, a word of knowledge is when the Holy Spirit reveals to you something that the other person hasn't told you when you haven't heard, it is given you as a revelation. It may be to the extent that I think the Holy Spirit has told me that so, so many years ago you had an accident and that left you with 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 this something, fear or a something. fear of yeah, something okay. like that and they've not told you that and you haven't heard, heard that, that but you just mm. sense that that was the case that might then lead you on to say and i god believe what to god is saying yeah, to you okay. and is let go of that fear and he will deal with it that's a very simple way in which that word of knowledge might work similarly with discernment mm. where discernment sees that it's a wrong spirit Maybe the person's just speaking or acting out of a wrong attitude in their own heart or it's an evil spirit that's affecting them. And again, that could lead to praying for them, perhaps, and seeing the demon cast out of them, but then saying, now, this is what God wants you to yeah. do and say. So the prophetic is that sort of sense of God wants to do more in you. He wants to see more. Yeah. You know, it's that sense of what God is already <clears throat> doing. Yes. It's, it's not about fortune telling or oh, about, right, right. you know. In fact, that's I would say very few prophetic words are actually predictive. Okay. That right. There are, though. They are there. But, but they're, they're, they're more. And I think every, you know, ordinary people, if I can put it that way, ordinary Christians, you don't think, well, I'm not this, that and the other, but sure. just want to play their part. Begin by just saying to the Lord, just give me something that helps that other person, yeah. encourages the yeah. other person. And it, as I say, it could be a reading from Scripture, it could be a song. You see, some prophecy isn't from God as much as being about God. Wow. So you can have a prophetic prayer which lifts the whole. Lifts our tone eyes of and a lifts gathering. our eyes from being about yeah. us to being about yeah. Him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That. And that, that's prophetic in that broad sense, too, because it's bringing us into a deeper, fresher awareness mm. of God. A song can be. You know, you can sing through two or three songs in a gathering, in, in the worship time. <laughs> the worship <laughs> time. Um, and then suddenly there's a song that goes... Psh! And just lifts everyone's yeah. spirits. Yeah. Or somebody prays. And again, you, you get that same sense. The atmosphere just There's shifts. There's something yeah. else that comes in there because the Holy Spirit is taking hold mm -hmm. of that and that becomes, again, in that broad sense, prophetic. It would help, I think, if we stop thinking about prophecy as pr primarily predictive. Yeah, yeah. But it's primarily about calling people up to a greater awareness of God and the Lord Jesus and the work of the Spirit. And what that does life. automatically is give a fresh perspective mm. so that the situations that we are struggling with in our lives that maybe bring our eyes down mm. or inward, actually, as we sing that song or as we hear that prayer and yeah. as we partner with it, yeah. it lifts our eyes, it changes our perspective yeah. and it gives us a fresh outlook Absolutely. on what God is doing. Yeah. And we all have to go through struggles. We all have to go through hard stuff. It's the way in which we mature and grow. Yeah. Um, but God is always working he's always doing something and the prophetic gift reminds us of that and so if somebody listening to this 
at home is kind of going, oh, I've never thought of myself as a prophet or very prophetic. I don't really know what that really means, but I can get alongside this idea of encouraging people to look at God, mm. to look at him. Mm. Um, how would you encourage that person today to step into that and to say, yeah, okay, God, I, I hear what you're saying. I'm going to partner with you, but mm. I just don't know how. That, that, that's a, that, that is a good question because our lives are full of so many things. I think your word perspective might be a help here. So pray at the beginning of the day, Lord, help me to see things through your eyes, mm. to hear things as you hear them. Open my inner ear and my inner eye to be aware of you as I go through my day. And then trust him that as you go, you might see something. I saw a... Uh, uh, a male sparrow hawk perched on uh, a, a pole the other day, and it just did something for me in terms of reassuring me about something that God had said to me because I saw beyond, oh, that's a bird sitting yeah. on a pole, to a sense of something that God had made, and there was a, an awareness in a new yeah. way. So I would suggest asking God to help you to see and hear from his perspective. Yeah. during the course of the day. And when you read your Bible, which I trust you do uh, regularly, instead of just reading it to inform your head, again, ask the Holy Spirit to show you something behind mm -hmm. the words yeah. that you're reading that yeah. you can share yeah. with, with, other, with other people. Yeah. And perhaps even ask God to just bring to mind a person to just share that yeah. encouragement with yeah. as means of practice. Yeah. You know, yeah, um, I, yeah I saw that bird today. Yeah. Okay, that might be just me being a bit weird about birds. But actually, if I text my friend and say, hey, I just saw this bird today and it really reminded me that God's creation is really beautiful. Yeah. And, and he's something. watching. And he's, he's watching, he's, he's seeing. Watching yeah, us. good. Yeah. And and you said, and, and that person can respond and say, yeah, thank you for that. That's yeah, just, really encouraged me. It's just what I needed to hear. Yeah. That's going to really encourage you absolutely. to be like, hang on, I do hear from God. What? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's an, a relatively easy step. Yeah. And it puts you into a position where you're actually walking with the spirit. Mm. I think Paul talks about that quite a bit, doesn't he? Does, he does, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> kind of one of, his, the one of his themes, yeah. <clears throat> and then and that sense of alertness. Yeah. It might help, too, to do your reading out loud. Okay, wow, yeah. There's something that happens, I find, when you read the words of the scriptures out loud that, that takes them, somehow impacts you slightly differently. Awakens your spirit yeah, a little bit. And, and yeah, and then just looking, looking at them on the page. Yeah. That's not always possible or easy. But um, And I know some people listen through the podcast yeah, and yeah. things like that. But I, I find that sometimes really helpful yeah. so that you put the stress on it. Read it a bit more slowly than perhaps you sometimes do. So that's seeing the spirit behind the words yeah. in the Bible and seeing the spirit through the things yeah. that you may go on ar around you. And this is it, isn't it? We don't actually get to turn the voice of God on and off like a light switch. We don't get to choose when he's going to speak to us. But we do get to change our perspective and open our eyes to see yes. and hear him. He is always talking to us. He's always speaking yeah. to us. The communication lines are always open, his end. Absolutely. And we're so used to compartmentalising our lives yeah. and saying, right, okay, God, you can talk to me on Sunday morning. You can talk to me on a Wednesday night. Yeah. Um, or when I'm putting my kids to bed and I'm praying for them or something, whatever it is. But yeah. actually, hang on, God, what about if I lived more prophetically yes. in a way that means I want to be open to what you yeah. are doing, God, all Listen. the time? Just listening. Yeah, at looking, work, being aware. Listening. Looking, yeah. listening. With the inner eye and the inner ear. And, and see what God does. And the prophet simply takes that whole process onto a wider scale. Yeah. Because the prophet sees bigger issues. He sees what's going on in the world, what's going on in the nation from the, pr the perspective of heaven. And we'll, and we'll go into that way more. And we're going to have another conversation with you, Tony, because I think we need to, to, to unpack that a little bit more as well. But I think... Can you imagine what would happen if everybody listening to this podcast decided, yeah, I'm going to try that. I'm going to decide to read my scripture this morning a little slower and out loud and try and see behind the words, see what God is doing. Or if I decided, 
yeah, okay, if everyone decided, yeah, we're going to keep our eyes open today and see what God might be showing us. It's going to be vastly exciting. How exciting. How exciting. And, and how impactful for the church. Particularly with your community groups or life groups, or whatever you call them, and in smaller churches like your yeah. own, where everybody has... You can say, next time we gather together, I'm looking to see everybody bringing something yeah. that they've seen from God's perspective, yeah. or heard as from God's, God's word. Perspective. Fantastic. Yeah. Tony, thank you so much for sharing. At the end of every podcast, I invite each of my guests to share a worship song or a lyric from a song that's just speaking to your heart right now. <laughs> something that you're seeing from God's perspective, a song that's just lifting your eyes to him. And um, I wonder if there is one right now. That is encouraging you in this season. Uh, I, not, not a great one for songs, but there's a song that always has sort of turns my eyes back to the right place, and it's it's the song um, you know uh, it's all about you when mm. the music fades. Yeah, and all is stripped away. And all can't. is stripped away. What what really counts? It counts yeah. that I'm in touch with Jesus. Yeah, Beautiful. it's all about it's all about you and. That that always helps me through those slightly darker times, awkward times, to say, well, it's, it's not about getting this right, that right, and the other mm. right. It's about him. It's yeah. about Jesus. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you for your wisdom and your insight. We really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Real pleasure. We hope you've enjoyed this conversation. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. If you've got a story to tell, get in touch with us. We'd love to hear it. You can contact us at podcast at takingground.org.uk. See you next time.